Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for uh, January 15th, 2019. What I'm going to be doing today is a NYX soft tackle in tan and this is a uh, pattern developed by the late Nick Nicholas uh, over at Blue Ribbon Flies in West Yellowstone and it's among my favorite patterns on the Firehole River. Uh, I catch about all of my fish virtually on the Firehole on about 10 flies and about 80 percent of them on four flies and this is one of the four uh, the other three being a uh, palmer cdc nectopsyche caddis uh, which you'll also find on facebook or on youtube and then uh, my glass head soft tackle pheasant tail again also on youtube and then a white miller soft tackle again also on youtube the main reason I'm going to be doing this fly however is to demonstrate the uh, technique of making the wing if you may notice here I've got both feather fibers and crystal flash in the wing and uh, I'm using a technique I've, I have a video for it actually it's uh, I think the video is titled soft using soft tackles uh, using larger feathers on soft tackles or something like that uh, but I actually have to do that twice on this fly because it's uh, like I said it's got two collars it's got one of feathers and uh, one of flash so my thread is going to be 60 brown the hook I'm using here is a size 14 Komodo, uh, I think it's a K100BL, uh, or K100B, which is their kind of standard dry fly hook. And if you notice, it's actually, to me, it seems like it's a little bit short and a little bit stout compared to a lot of dry fly hooks. And in my opinion, that makes it a good soft tackle hook because it's stout enough that you can run it into a few things and not break it off, or it, you know, the hook won't break if you get a good trout to strike it while you're swinging it but it's also light enough you could fish it in or just under the film without any problems and those are kind of the two ways I like to fish soft tackles. <clears throat> so my first collar on this fly is actually going to be a uh, this is a domestic hen feather and uh, I actually bought the the skin online if you hunt around online you can find some really neat kind of speckled browns grays uh, of domestic hen skins and I think this was probably 20 25 bucks and it's a great big skin I mean it almost seems like a turkey skin and uh, the uh, you just kind of got to hunt around for them and if you see a good one to snap it up so the first thing I'm going to do here is kind of even out those fibers on my uh, like you would if you were going to be pulling off fibers to make a tail or something like that and then I'm going to strip those off trying to keep them as even as possible and if you notice there's some kind of little curlies here uh, where bits of the feather stem were torn off and I'm just going to clip those. And then I'm going to reverse that so that they're facing in my left hand and then facing forward like that. And I'll kind of measure that against the shank, slide it forward, and then take a single loose wrap here. And that's crucial. It's going to be a single wrap and a loose one. And I'm going to kind of use that thread tension. And it, I might even go back and forth a little bit trying to evenly spread those feather fibers around the hook and that's the key here is that that single thread wrap um, is used to kind of get those fibers more or less where you want them and then when they're there that's when you take a couple tight wraps to secure them and I'm going to move back slightly here and then trim off those butts and then with the you know you may have noticed when I tied the feathers in I did have a single layer of thread there right behind the eye with the flash for the second collar I find that it actually works better if I get back a little bit on the hook shank and have almost a bare shank where I tie that in so my second collar is pearl midge flash it's midge crystal flash and I you notice I've trimmed those um, ends of the fibers about square to make it easier to get them about the same length as that feather color. And what I'm going to do is the same thing here. I'm going to set those on the shank so that they extend about even with the uh, feather fibers, maybe a hair shorter, hair longer, and then again a single loose wrap here and try to distribute those more or less evenly around the shank. And that was about eight or ten fibers on the uh, size 14 here. If I was tying a 16 I'd use a couple less. And then once I get those more or less around, I'm going to grab everything here, take a couple wraps forward while holding them, and then finish off by wrapping again all the way to the eye and some tight wraps there. Now, the flash also is what I use for the tail here. And so I'm going to grab those fibers and then wrap back. You notice how I'm going to go back there. You notice how what I did here is I actually grabbed the fibers and pulled straight up. That way, as I wrap over them, 
everything moves back to the top of the hook where you're gonna no, you know, you normally want your tail materials. I'm gonna stop that pretty short, basically even with a uh, little head of the barb actually on that hook, and then clip those. And I do that, I clip that a little short because I think this hook is a little bit long for a caddis pattern, and so I just move everything slightly forward to even it out. Now my body is just kind of a tan acrylic dubbing. Doesn't matter what kind of dubbing you use. Um, the original probably used Zelon dubbing. I've tied these with rabbit fur. I've tied them with squirrel. You just want some dubbing that's going to be a little bit coarse and messy. And I made a mistake in a uh, probably the Gussie lightning bug video I did a couple weeks ago, and I said I always dub from back to from front to back and then back to front. That's not correct. I always dub from front to back and then forward back over it when I care what the body looks like. I don't really care what the body looks like on this fly, and so I'm just going to make. Not a single layer, because I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm, ba I'm making a couple turns and then backing over what I put in. Um, but I'm also not too worried about making everything neat and tidy, because the fish are going to be looking at the uh, little tendrils of dubbing and, and the flash and the, and the feathers and so on. They don't care that it's even, and so neither do I. So I'm going to come in here now. I'm, I'm, I've dubbed all the way back to the eye again. And I'm going to kind of try to make sure I've got those fibers more or less even. What I find is that the flash in particular will tend to want to clump up. The fish don't care, uh, but, you know, I've got to sell it to customers first. So once I've done that, I'm going to sweep everything back and hold it there. And then just take a couple turns in front, sort of stand things up. And then get my whip finishing tool, come in again here. And four or five turns. And you notice that that makes for a very, very small head. Some of the other uh, ways of tying in feathers that are too long on soft tackles result in a pretty bulky head. And, and you know, one of the things I like about a traditional soft tackle is that the heads are very small. And the other thing it does, you notice how those, those feathers want to stand up straight here. You can see as I've relaxed tension on them, they've wanted to go, the whole collar, the flash, the feather, is wanted to get up and stand up straight. Once that flies in the water, having that orientation rather than bound down tight to the shank as it would be if I just tied everything in, um, like say a V of feathers and I just tied it in like this, uh, that probably wasn't the best way of showing that, but if I just tied things in angled back over the back of the fly, they're going to want to lay over the back of the fly. If I tie them in forward and then sort of dammed them with the last few thread wraps as I did here, they're going to want to be up or even slightly forward. And so when it's the fly is in the water um, being fished on a swing, it's going to not collapse as much. And so it gets much the same kind of orientation as it would if I had wrapped the feather as you would if you had a properly sized feather. So there's a Nick soft tackle and a pretty cool method of tying in uh, those materials and uh, by all means tie this in alternate colors. I also tie it in olive with sort of a tannish brown flash. Uh, I can't imagine it would uh, fail to work if you used peacock curl for the body or you know some kind of an ice dub for the, the body, different game bird feathers, uh, what have you. As always, thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions please contact me at the links in the description and uh, enjoy.